Hey everyone, welcome back to the new lecture with ISO IEC 17025-2017 edition and under process requirement we have handling of test or calibration items. How the standard of this document directed the lab in sample handling. The standard focused on consistent generation of valid results. And the critical control point here is the transfer of samples from the site up to the lab and subsequent handling of these samples by the lab. Because samples shall be representative and that means the sample, the result of the sample shall, be, shall represent the collected samples without any effect. So the results will be valid and, will, and that will support the decision makers after that. And this section also applicable to test or calibrations performed on site at the customer location and on site calibration services also in case of calibration laboratories. The lab shall have a procedure, so you shall prepare a procedure, it's a must, for transportation, receipt, handling, protection, storage, retention, and disposal or return of test or calibration items. So you will prepare a procedure including all of these points to protect the integrity of the sample up to receiving the sample in the lab and subsequent handling of these samples by the lab to ensure the integrity of the results, including all provisions necessary to protect the integrity of test or calibration items. So the purpose of this procedure is to protect the integrity of test or calibration items or to protect the sample, your sample to be representative until receiving the sample in the lab and subsequent handling of these samples by the lab. And the precautions shall be taken to avoid deterioration, contamination, loss or damage to the item during the whole process. You shall take some precautions to protect the integrity of the sample, to keep the sample representative of the parameter of interest up to receiving the sample in the lab and subsequent handling of this sample by the lab and so you will get at the end valid results. And handling instructions, all handling instructions that you will record in this procedure shall be followed. And also identification system for test or calibration items is very important for the lab to prevent mixing of these items together. So the lab shall have a system for identification of test or calibration items to eliminate or reduce the risk due to mixing of samples together in case of test items and also mixing of calibration items in case of calibration laboratory. As example for collection of samples in a containers, these containers or these bottles shall be labeled with a specific color for each unit in the lab. As example, if you have microbiology, inorganic, organic lab and other units also, you can make a label with a specific color for each unit. So it will be, be easy for every person in the lab to identify that this is for microbiology, this label for inorganic, this label for organic. And after that also you will identify that in the label, the parameters that will be collected in the label. So date, time, unit on the label and also parameter that will be collected and the symbol at the initial of the sampler. Then you will separate the containers. These bottles or these containers, you will separate them in different boxes during transportation. During transportation. If you separate them in different boxes during transportation, that will be easy for you to bring these for organic lab, these for these bottles for inorganic lab, these bottles for microbiology lab. It will be easy to get the bottles during collection of samples. This identification system and all of these informations related to labeling the bottles and separating the, the bottles in different boxes shall be mentioned also in the procedure. And very important point, the samples collected shall be checked at the lab to ensure the suitability of these samples for analysis. And if there is any deficiency or something not suitable, that shall be recorded. So, upon receipt of test or calibration items, deviations from specified conditions shall be recorded. What are these deviations? Such as the item 
not conforming to the description provided or not suitable, not enough for analysis. It's not enough amount for analysis, not preserved well. So all of these points, if you found any of these points, that shall be recorded and notified to the customer if he insists, if he required the samples to be analyzed. At the end, you shall mention that also in the final report. And very important point also to keep the sample representative of the parameter of interest. Some items need to be preserved in a specific environmental conditions. So when the items need to be preserved, or stored under specified environmental conditions, these conditions shall be maintained, monitored, and recorded. Example for that, you want to preserve these bottles or containers in a specific temperature. So you will maintain temperature and maintaining temperature by keeping data logger, data logger with these bottles. Data logger will record the temperature during the whole transportation and that will be recorded in a specific form for that. And same thing for calibration laboratory. Any calibration items need to be stored under specified environmental conditions also shall be monitored and recorded and that also shall be mentioned in the procedure. So in case of sample collection, the lab shall follow chain of custody. As I explained before in the previous lecture, 7.3 sampling, the lab shall follow chain of custody for sample collection, which is traceability of the sample from transportation, collection, receipt, up to analysis of the sample and getting the final report to keep the integrity of the sample and the integrity of the results. As here in this graph, chain of custody, first sample collection, then transfer to the lab, sample receipt, then analysis of the samples and test results will be reported and receive the test result received to the decision makers and based on the received results they can say or can decide uh, by the acceptance or rejection of the sample so sample transportation collection transportation handling storage all of these points are very important to keep the integrity of the sample and keep the integrity of the results at the end because that will support the decision makers as example for the chain of custody in case of water analysis field first checklist we will prepare a checklist including all units in the lab and under each unit all parameters required to be analyzed then bottles we will prepare also bottles bottles shall be prepared for each parameter according to the reference method you will check the reference method for each parameter and what is the bottle required to collect this parameter so there should be a specific bottle for each parameter and also preservant shall be added according to the reference method if required for each parameter there is a specific bottle according to the reference method and in sampling method lab shall lab shall uh, identify the required preservant the required preservant for each parameter and how to collect the sample in such a way that the sample will be representative of the parameter of interest then sample bottles shall be kept in a separated ice boxes for each unit in the lab you will have a separated ice box so you have microbiology in organic and organic each unit you have a specific ice boxes containing only its bottles to be easy to get the bottle during sample collection and bottles shall be identified specific label for each unit with a specific color also to be easy for identification so identification system is very important and that returned also to the lab car used for transportation shall be equipped with freezers to preserve the sample during transportation and temperature in this case during transportation shall be maintained monitored and recorded and that will be by data logger and data logger will record the temperature during the whole transportation of the sample from the from the field up to the lab so you will have also a specific form to record this temperature then collected samples shall be recorded in the checklist whatever samples that you will collect for each parameter you shall record that in the checklist that you prepared in the beginning and also on the label on the label you will record the sampling location date time preservant added to this bottle and also initial of the sampler and that 
identification system to prevent any risk due to misidentification. Then, once the sample will be transported and received by the lab, the sample's receipt is very important. Every sample you will receive, you shall record in a form. And if there is any deviation from the specified conditions, that shall be recorded also. And at the end, analysis. Analysis is very important. Analysis requirement, sometimes you will find some some analytes need to be analyzed on the same time. In this case, the analyst shall wait and shall uh, receive this uh, receive this sample and analyze on the same time. But for some other analytes, it can take six hours or one day or more than one day. In this case, no problem. You can uh, preserve the samples in the freezer or the fridge according to the specified temperature and these freezers also shall be equipped with data, data logger with uh, the required temperature and temperature shall be recorded daily in a specific form. And that was the procedure required to be prepared for handling transportation storage of test items. So you can use this as the procedure and you can also change or modify in this procedure according to the lab requirement. That was the end of our lecture for today. Thank you and see you in the next lecture.